what is up, bros and broettes? I'm sure you've seen it by now. The viral video from Jacob Fouts basically calling out tournament fishing or contemporary tournament fishing. I have something to add to it. So I met Jacob Fouts um, basically before he got onto the Elite Series, right when he qualified at 44 Tackle with my buddy Chris Kingry. And we were actually on a podcast together. Ironically, I told him about a lot of the things that he talked about and kind of let him know that social media was hugely important. But that's not what this video is about. Uh, Jacob brought out some really interesting points about honesty, um, saturation, how there's all these guys fishing, there's all these guys creating fishing content, there's a lot of guys lying about stuff and not telling the whole story. And one thing, Jacob's a little younger than me, you know, he's a youngin, and what Jacob didn't mention is something that happened before he ever got to the Elite Series that completely molded and formed the situation that he's in. So I wanted to kind of add my two cents and just bring you a more honest history of kind of where tournament fishing is at and why it's there because in a lot of ways it's really the fault of the pro anglers themselves and i'm not saying ex like exactly jacob but a lot of the guys who came for him and the tournament formats that really made the bed that a lot of these younger anglers are seeing. And it might be kind of a reality check for some younger anglers looking to be professionals, compete professionally. So basically, Jacob talked about how you can't make any money because there's so many people vying for dollars, you know, so many YouTube guys like myself, you know, so many guys fishing the opens, fishing the lower level, like amateur pro style kind of tournaments like the Toyota series and that. And they're all grabbing at these dollars and you almost have to have social media to be relevant and he, he kind of he complained about it for lack of a better word like it was really frustrating to him because back in the day when you'd hit that level and you'd arrive and make that level and qualify you were in dude like that's a sign your golden ticket you're in and as long as you halfway stay competitive you stay relevant you're good to go it doesn't work that way anymore and that's just a reality check dude but there's a reason why it's like that and it's something that Jacob, I don't know if he doesn't know this or it's kind of before his time, but what really happened, and I've been on YouTube since 2010, so I've seen a lot of things kind of change and evolve. And what happened when YouTube kind of showed up on the fishing scene, and I was there, you know, me and probably like 25, 30 other people, John B was there, you know, a lot of the kind of old school big names that, that you hear. What happened was, is it's not like we, I don't know, took something from pro fishing like you know putting up the videos and guys watching the videos and stuff it's something that that pro fishing wasn't giving the angler it wasn't giving to you it wasn't giving the the end user the person who loves to fish and catch fish like for lack of a better word they were lying dude like the the fishing tournament coverage was very manipulated these pros were very money driven and they still are which which is okay to an extent but they weren't genuine you know, they were they were fronting for certain baits. They would lie about a certain bait that they caught them during the tournament. Like, and, and that was the environment, you know. If, if you weren't tournament fishing, you weren't relevant. You didn't have anything to say. But the fact is, is there was this huge deficit. There was this huge desire of people to learn how to fish, catch more fish, and, and learn about techniques and stuff. And these pros weren't doing it. They were sort of like, they were lying by omission, as we talked about in one of our earlier videos. And they were holding a lot of things back or they were swapping them out. So there was an environment where there was a lot of just non-genuine stuff going on. A lot of lack of honesty, a lot of faking stuff, a lot of faking fish catches for baits and stuff like that. A lot of that's been alleviated with the, like, the lives and things like that and the continual coverage. But the environment was, these guys are lying. You guys aren't stupid. You're pretty critical. Like, I'm pretty critical. We knew it. Like, we knew we were getting fed, like, a bunch of jargon. And so what happened was, is, is YouTube kicked in. I started posting videos on flipping, stuff like that. And it was literally honest, 100%, just me on the water, proof of concept stuff, like, showing you what I was doing, how I was doing it, where I was doing it. If it applied to you, you could take it and apply it. And what Jacob doesn't see is, is that grabbed a lot of attention. And there's a good reason for that. Like people wanted to learn, they wanted more. And these pros were not doing it. They were, they were kind of keeping everything tight lipped. They were, they were restricting information. They were censoring what they would say, or they were actually manipulating the things that they would say. So it wasn't actually honest. And that's, that's really the environment we had that birthed all this social media stuff, all this, this YouTube stuff. It's definitely a different environment now. 
but back then it was about raw like straight up content dude and that that's kind of what i was putting out and that's why a lot of people gravitated towards it they wanted someone they could relate to someone that offered them them something like like a bait like a, a real concept that they could take to their lake and apply and you know jacob was complaining quite a bit about like saturation you know but the reason there is so much saturation is because there was so much demand for honesty and something more than what these pros and these tournament circuits were offering. So I think there's a little more to the story than what Jacob kind of lays out. And it's not his fault because it, it happened kind of five or six years before him. But there's a reason why there's so many guys on YouTube. Yes, there's an opportunity to make money. There's an opportunity to kind of grow your brand, you know, which then leads to making money. There's also an opportunity to kind of talk to people directly and create a forum and really share. I love fishing, dude. I would be doing this whether I made money or didn't make money or made a little money. It doesn't matter, dude. I love this. I'm passionate about it and it gets me off. So I'm going to do this no matter what. But there's definitely an opportunity to make money and there's an incentive. But there's also an opportunity to connect with people and to, to really kind of share your knowledge, especially I didn't really have a mentor to, to learn how to fish. So a lot of the stuff I learned was from friends or from somebody telling me something. And for a lot of guys, maybe they didn't have that. So they turned to the YouTube videos and they turned to various creators and stuff to learn about different baits, different seasonal stuff, different techniques. But there was definitely like a, a value transaction there where the pros and these tournament circuits weren't providing what, what the end angler, the, the one watching this video, me, the one who's consuming fishing stuff, needed and wanted. That, that genuineness and, and the credibility just wasn't there because you knew they were kind of full of it, dude. That leads to part two of this rant. Jacob really brought, and I think that's why the video got so popular, he brought just this whole wealth of honesty you know to the table whether whether you agree with all of it whether you disagree you know he has his own perspective it is what it is but the point being is there's still that demand there's still an opportunity to sort of be yourself and i think people maybe i'm naive dude but i think people gravitate towards that they in the end you know people are and some people say people are inertly bad i think people are halfway decent not totally but you know we we strive towards decency and i think part of that is you know, this experience of fishing, it's so fulfilling. Like, you guys are hardcore. I'm hardcore. I love this. You know, I might not be the best at it, but it's so fulfilling to me. There's something about it that just keeps drawing me back in. I want to be involved in it. I want to do it all the time. And people like that, they, they want, like, the good. They want to learn. They want to grow. And I think those people gravitate towards that honest content. And I think Jacob you know, agree or disagree with him. I think that's an example of that. And I think the way you guys have supported my content in the past is an example of that. Like you want direct talking to you as a person, you know, being open, being honest, being direct, trying to help you. Cause you guys help me too. Like you guys always throw comments in the comments and like grow, like grow kind of my fishing knowledge, expand it, give me tips on things that I didn't even think about. And I think that's what people are looking for. And I don't know if it's totally out there. Yeah, there's a bunch of saturation. There's a bunch of content out there. But it doesn't mean that it's all the right content. There's always the opportunity to drive the conversation. And I think that's where Jacob really nailed it on the head. And I think even with all the people on YouTube, all the pro circuits, the NPFL, the FL, well, it's not FLW, it's MLF, you know, all these pro circuits, I think that opportunity is still there because in the end, people gravitate towards towards honesty and people that that connect with him and that can be anybody dude rich poor brown black white yellow it doesn't matter it, it's about the person dude and and that connection and that growth and that that potential of growth and driving that conversation and driving that that thing that we love the sport of fishing in the direction that that we think it should go i'm not saying you're always going to get a million views or anything like that i'm a great example of that like i don't expect to get viral videos or anything like that but i also am willing to put in the work to sort of drive the conversation or or i don't know at least push things in the direction i think they should go and at the end of the day i can say that that i did that you know i i I threw in my two cents. I said what I thought I had to say. I drove the conversation. I added what I could to that. And hopefully it maybe nudges the sort of direction of, of development and evolution of our sport in a slightly closer direction to what I think it should be. I think that's the game. And I think Jacob's right on his way to creating that brand. Um, but I do think there's a bigger, a bigger picture that maybe he didn't pick up on. 
because he wasn't around. You know, it happened before him that really created this environment. You know, a, a lot of times negative things, little negative things can really spawn a reaction. But it isn't all negative, dude. I think a lot of positives have come from, from so many guys being on YouTube and the development of so many people coming into fishing. It's not all pretty and it's not all smooth and even, but it definitely there's still definitely a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of opportunities for, for people who want to be honest, genuine, credible, and really, I don't know, really connect with people. So that's my two cents. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to kind of add to Jacob's thing. Like I said, we were on a podcast um, back at 44 Tackle down in Inverness, dude, with my buddy Chris Kingery. Dude, awesome shop if you ever get to visit. I'll put a link to the podcast down in the description box. But we kind of had this conversation with Jacob, and um, it's interesting to kind of expand that story and put a little more perspective on it. But hit that like and subscribe button. If you haven't watched Jacob's video, go watch it. It's very interesting. But I'm going to get back to fishing. It's a beautiful fall day. Tight lines, homies.